One thing I get asked super often is how I'm able to buy so many cars and how I'm always able to get them for super cheap. And well today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys my secret on how to buy a car for as cheap as you possibly can. Hey guys, my name's Logan or Mr. Cream and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can buy a car cheaper than anyone else. With this method, there's no better way you could buy a car. For this to work, it's not necessarily a, here's a bunch of different tips, it's more of a step-by-step -step process. So make sure that if you wanna buy a car for as cheap as you can, Watch to the end of the video to get the most value out of it as you possibly can. Now, when you go to buy a car, there's a couple of different things you need to do, but the number one thing you need to figure out before you buy a car is what car you want to buy. Well, duh. Doing this will narrow down and make your search a lot easier. If you narrow down your search from say 50 cars all the way to like one to three cars, you're gonna be able to get a tighter grip on exactly what you wanna get, what you need to look for, and you're gonna save yourself a ton of time on research and just searching in general. All right, so now that you figured out what exactly what kind of car you wanna buy, the next important thing is figuring out what that car is worth so you know if you're actually getting a good deal or not. And in order to do this, simply just spend a lot of time searching the different marketplaces, look on places like Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace and Auto Trader. Those are three really big private selling platforms and those are gonna be their great ways in order to buy a car because there's gonna be a lot of variety, a lot of options to choose from. So once you figured out what car you wanna buy, do some research, figure out what that car is worth. Spend a lot of time so you know if you're getting a good deal or not. All right, so now that you've figured out what the car you wanna buy is worth, the next thing that you need to do is actually go and look at some cars. Now, when I go to look at a car, when I go to message somebody about their car, there's two things that I look at, and one of them is something that people always miss out on. The first one is pretty obvious. Is the car cheap? Is it listed below market value? If a car is listed below market value, it looks good, it may be a good deal, and that's something that you want to inquire about, obviously. But the second thing that people always forget to do, the second thing that people always miss out on is also look at the cars that look like they may have been overpriced a little bit. Maybe they're listed for slightly above market value, but have also been listed on whatever selling platform they're on for a longer period of time. Me personally, I've been able to buy multiple cars by seeing something that's been listed for a long time, is maybe right at the market value, maybe a little bit above. Nobody has gone to look at it because they think it's too expensive. So what I'll do is I'll message the person, go and look at the car. Oftentimes, if not every time, you're able to negotiate down a significant amount from the price because the person has had it listed for a long time and they just want to get rid of the car. Now, while we're here, we're also going to talk about negotiation, which is the next step. After you've found a car, you want to go look at it. You think it's going to be a good deal. It's what you're looking for. You got to negotiate with the owner. Never, ever buy a car for what the listed price is. This isn't a dealership. You're not going to a dealership and paying sticker price. You're buying a used car off of a private seller. So what you always wanna do is negotiate the price. There's only one time where I would say to not negotiate, and that's if the price is already really good and the seller has other people lined up and they're flaky. Now, when I bought this car, the guy I bought it off of was super, super flaky. I'd already traveled a decent distance to come and look at it and the price was really good. So in a situation like this, with this car, I didn't try and negotiate the price. I wanted to get the paper signed and I wanted to get the deal done as soon as I could so I didn't risk losing out on the car. But in every other aspect of buying a car, negotiation is always an important thing to do. Ideally, around 30% is considered a fair negotiation amount. So say you're buying a car that's listed for two grand, paying 1,400 bucks for it, that's a pretty good price, that's a good negotiation amount. But before we get into like the little nipping things about negotiation let's jump into how you can bring the price down significantly maybe even more than 30% now there's a number of ways you can bring the price down on a vehicle but the biggest thing that you're gonna be able to do to bring down that price is to see the car in person and actually look at any of the flaws realistically no car is perfect unless it's coming right off the factory line so there are going to be little things that you can find that you'll be able to use to drive the price down there are three main things that I look at when I figure out what a car should be worth the first one is going to be the exterior, the paint and the quality of the exterior of the car. Is the clear coat fading? Is there any rust on the vehicle? Is there any dents or dings or scratches? Or is there any hail damage on the vehicle? The next thing that I look at on a car is the interior. What is the condition of the interior like? Are the seats all intact? Are they worn out? Do any of the instruments on the interior not work? Are the door panels all in good shape? That's a big one. That's really what I look for on the inside. Just look at it, use your best judgment. Does the car look like it's in good shape? The last and one of the most important things in the engine bay and how the car drives. 
everything to do with the mechanical aspect of the vehicle. If a car doesn't run and drive good, if the engine looks like it's in bad shape, it's maybe not a car that you wanna buy. Even if the exterior and the interior are in really good shape, it may not be a good buy. The first three things that I look at when I pop the hood, are there any leaks in the engine? Is there anywhere where there's oil on the outside of the motor? I look at the quality of the oil. Does the oil look like it's old and gross? Does it look like it's newer oil? Is the level of the oil at the correct spot? And I also look at the coolant. What does the coolant look like? It's in the condition. Those are the main three things. There's a ton of other stuff that you can look at though, such as you know your brake or clutch fluid. Those are both important that those are in good shape. And just the overall cleanliness of the engine bay. Does it look like this car has been thrashed around a bunch or does it look like it's been well kept? Now on the aspect of mechanical engine, that sort of thing, another really important part to look at is always going to be the mileage. No matter what car you are buying, the mileage is always going to affect the value of the vehicle. All right, so now that you're in the vehicle, you've done your look around the vehicle, you look at the outside, you look at the engine bay, the interior looks like it may be in good shape. The next thing that you wanna do is actually get inside the car and you want to drive it. Never buy a car without driving it unless you're importing a car or something like that where you maybe have a bit more experience with this sort of thing. Always, always, always test drive it. And if the seller won't let you test drive it, walk away. It often means that there's something wrong with the vehicle they don't want you to know about. Now, if the car you're looking at is a manual, always make sure your clutch feels good and also make sure that your shifter feels good. Make sure it's not grinding any gears and also make sure that when you go to test drive the car, that it actually goes through the gears. Actually drive, go from first all the way to fifth if you can. That way you can actually get a good feel of what the transmission is like. And while you're driving the car, Test out your brakes, really slam on them, make sure that they work, make sure there's no issues with them. Make sure you listen for any weird noises, any clunking, any pinging, any tinging. You don't wanna be buying a car. It may look good on the outside, but if it's got a messed up motor, you don't wanna buy it, and sometimes you won't even know until you drive it if there's gonna be any issues. Now, while you're driving the car, make sure you test everything out on the inside. Again, test your horn, test things like your cruise control, your ABS, if you have ABS, slam on those brakes, really make sure that works. If you have AC, check your AC, make sure that your AC works, because that can bring down the value of the car a lot if it doesn't have working AC. Make sure all your instruments that are reading at an accurate level, you make sure your tack is, uh, looks good, make sure your speedometer is actually reading the correct speed that you are going, and make sure if your radio works, make sure if there is a radio, Make sure that it actually is working. Test your speakers out. Every single button inside the car, press them. Press every single one. Don't leave a single button unpressed. And then also make sure your locks and all these sorts of things work. You want a car that's gonna be in good shape. Sometimes it's okay to buy a car with broken things or things that don't work because they can bring down the value of the car a lot and it's often something that you can fix for a relatively cheap price. All right, so now you've gone over and you've looked over the entire car, you're getting ready to make a purchase. Before we get to any of these, is uh, make sure that your attitude is right the entire time. Never let something get you excited and never let something make you upset. Maintain a very monotone appearance and tone the entire time. Make it seem that you're interested in the car, but you could also walk away at any point. Make it seem like you've got cash in hand, you're ready to buy, but also make it seem like you don't need the car at that very moment. All of these things are gonna motivate the seller to sell the car for less money. It's all about the body language that you put off and how you display yourself while you're there. Don't let yourself get emotional, don't let yourself get excited or mad or upset or anything. If you get upset about things, if you're pointing out, nitpicking all these little things, it's gonna make the seller be like, ah, screw that, I'm not gonna sell it to you, I'll find somebody else. And if you're getting yourself super, super excited about the car, the seller is gonna think, oh, I can get this guy to pay full price for the car. He won't be willing to negotiate with you because he knows that you're gonna buy the car regardless. Be friendly, be nice, but uh, don't be overly enthusiastic and don't be too negative about the car. One thing that happened to me with one of my cars is I bought it and the window motors were going out. Now I had access to new window motors, so it wasn't an issue, but I just asked them a question. I was like, hey, do these normally work? Always asking questions is actually a very, very good way to make it clear to a seller that there's issues with the car. It doesn't say that, oh, I'm upset about this or anything like that, but it just makes it obvious to the seller that both of you guys know that that's an issue about the car. So now you've gone, you've made it clear that there's some issues while still keeping it positive. You want to buy the car and you want to get it as low as you possibly can. I always ask the seller, what's the price that you're looking to get? You know what the car is worth. You know what you want to pay for the car. What you need to figure out is 
What does this seller actually want to get for the car? Say it's five grand, you're willing to pay 4,500 bucks, and then all of a sudden the seller drops, oh, well, I could pay four grand for it. Now you just got another 500 bucks off the price without doing anything. I've used this so many times. So always, always ask questions. You never want to be the first person to offer a number. Get something off of them as a leading price that you can negotiate from. So once you got a number, send the counter offer. Four grand is what he's willing to go for. Ask him if he would do 35. You can work your way back and forth. He's already said yes to four. Four is a lot less than five grand, right? So you can always work your way back up to what he said. Make sure you always negotiate. Get it down as low as you possibly can. There's gonna be tons of other videos you can watch on how to negotiate, but this is really my step-by-step -step process. This is my method that I use for buying and selling cars. If you guys really enjoyed this video, if this was helpful to you in any way, please leave a like on this video. If this video gets 100 likes, just 100 likes, I will make a part two to this video. I'll bring even more tips in. I'll show you guys a lot more techniques for negotiation as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.